Can and you imagine the headaches if you had four ducks? I can't imagine what my old boss might be thinking. What's he burning? I mean, his old building, I know that. But. I was a cellar dweller. <laughs> and
Thank you. Mr. Slade? Here. Mr. Hoover? Here. Mr. Morrow? Here. Mr. Crockett? Here. Mr. Loisel? And Mr. Richard? Okay. And everybody is authorized to vote tonight, so we'll all be voting. There are five members voting tonight. Okay, great. Um, can I stand for Pledge of Allegiance? Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, so we uh, motion to for approval of the minutes from May 10th. Motion to approve it's presented. Second. Any discussion on the motion? Seeing none, all in favor? It's unanimous. Thank you very much. We have two appeals tonight. The appeal C, appeal number 2605, is tabled for the July meeting. Uh, that's the uh, Hutchinson variance, uh, vari um, variance for the Buyette Family Cottage LLC. So we'll start with the first appeal, 2601. It's a difficulty request by Timothy Dutton, 58 Ocean Avenue, Assessor's Map U Tool, parcels. 180. Fisher, how are you? Very well. Thank you. If you'd like to state uh, sure. your name and position, and we'll go from there. Yes, great. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Chairman, members of the board, Jim Fisher with Northeast Civil Solutions. I have the uh, pleasure and honor this evening to be here representing uh, Tim Dutton, who is with us this evening. He is the property owner and the appellant. Um, also, uh, this evening, we have uh, his architect, Walter Wilson, um, his uh, realtor, uh, Scott Townsend, his builder, Russ Doucette, and Mike Skolnick from NCS, who is the project manager. Uh, and that, I think we've got a, a lot of bases covered as far as any questions that you guys might have about uh, what we're doing and how we're doing it and what we're doing it, et cetera. Oh, we're going to feel ganged up on. I don't know. Which. <laughs> Good job having everybody. Um, it's easier. Thank you. Um, it, again, in the interest of brevity, I won't go over a whole lot of, or won't repeat a whole lot of what we had discussed two months ago. Uh, we were here back in uh, well, a couple of months ago discussing this project initially, and then we tabled it based on getting some further addition, additional information. Uh, essentially, what we're looking at is uh, we've got a home on the corridor of Ocean Avenue that leads down to, uh, <coughs> down to Higgins Beach, uh, where the proposal on a relatively large lot compared to a lot of the beach lots that are down in Higgins Beach is to uh, put the house, there's an existing house on the property right now that is uh, destined to be torn down. Uh, and the, the house that would go in its stead uh, would be back approximately 60 <coughs> feet from the edge of the right-of-way as opposed to the, the current form-based Higgins Church Code that has 18 to 21 feet back. Um, one of the reasons for this, actually there are a myriad number of reasons, and one of the reasons why we're back now, as having tabled it uh, a couple of months ago, uh, was to address the issue, amongst others, of the septic system. We have since done so. There was a, uh, is a design of the septic system that uh, has been sent <coughs> over to the town uh, several years ago. Uh, that system was designed uh, to actually have the, the septic field be essentially perpendicular to the lot. That would have constrained the lot considerably based on its topography because of the grading and the requirements of septic systems that are uh, required to be f a distance away from rights of way and from property lines. So what we did in order to try to minimize that, and by the way, I'd just like to mention that most of Higgins Beach is not on septic system, but this particular area is, this particular area meaning the corridor of Ocean Avenue. Uh, and when I refer to that corridor, we're actually talking about uh, Ocean Avenue from its inception at Spurwink all the way down to essentially where Garofalo's and where the, uh, the inn is at Higgins Beach. Uh, then it becomes more of the beach character with the considerably smaller lots and uh, a myriad number of streets. So what we're looking at here is a fairly large parcel, uh, the, the parcel of which is in character as well as the proposed house that would go on the, on the house on this parcel uh, with the other houses that are in that particular area. And as far as that septic system is concerned, what we did was in order to be able to minimize its impact to be able to get a house on that lot um, was to rotate it. We've got the, the um, test pit in its exact location as it was uh, submitted to the town several years ago. <coughs> By rotating that, that allows actually the uh, septic system to be uh, less defining on the lot than it would have been earlier. Prior to this time, it was actually taking up uh, almost the entire right side of the lot as you're standing on the road looking at it. It's actually two lots, two older lots that's been combined into one. Um, so what we did to be able to minimize that impact was to switch it 90 degrees, which is what you can see here. 
uh, with the grading that we've got on that lot relative to the septic system uh, and relative to the soils that are part of the HHE 200 report that's been submitted to the town, uh, the size of that septic system and its location to the boundaries, we actually need to be able to put this house a little bit further back than we were actually looking to do beforehand. Um, but again, that is under the provisions of the septic, so we put it as far cl as close to the road as we possibly can, given the location of that system. The bigger issue uh, as far as the overall character of the lot is concerned is exactly that. Um, it's the character of the lot relative to that and the rest of the lots that are in that particular area of Higgins Beach. Now again, we talked about this last time, so I won't go into great details other than to again say that um, of the myriad number of houses, 14 houses, um, 14 properties that are in that area, only one of them, uh, which is a considerably smaller house, which happens to be in the lot, or considerably smaller lot, which happens to be the house immediately adjacent to ours, is actually closer to the road than 40 feet. Uh, all of the other houses that are in that area from Spurwink all the way down to, it's about uh, 1,400 feet to go off the lows, are sitting back at least 40 feet from the right of way. So from a character standpoint, uh, we are right in with that area. Given that, I won't go into any more specific details unless you have questions, but I would like to invite uh, uh, Walter Wilson to be able to come up and just speak about the, the house itself and the character of that area. Good evening, Walt Wilson from Design Company. Uh, as you know, like Jim was saying, the houses on this section of road are more traditional uh, from the standpoint of more like a subdivision house type layout, typical individual homes that have been put on the property, unlike Higgins Beach proper, where it's more of a cottage style home. The designs in the, of the houses on this section of road, they vary. Uh, most of them have garages, not all. Uh, most of them well developed front yards, um, landscape and so forth. And the setbacks from the road are distinctively different than Higgins Beach proper. Now, the character of the house and so forth, we haven't yet developed that yet because we're waiting on the input from the board and the results of the setback thing in order to orientate the house properly that would fit the lot, and that may dictate some of the character and look of the house. Uh, we are subject, though, to the character code of Higgins Beach um, that's been developed. And we're going to have to take and design this in such a way that we have a, uh, a garage attached to the side of a house, which under the character code is called an estate wing, um, off the main house. Uh, we're going to maintain the front porch and the character of the Higgins Beach ordinance as far as the components of the building go. The biggest question we have, or at least I have from a design standpoint, is where the building is going to be located. Now, like Jim was saying, the leach field design and so forth, it's going to have to go in the front of the house for the best results of, of grading and of leach field and, and all that. Uh, last time we were here, uh, we were told to go investigate the existing leach field. Well, the investigation said there's nothing there because it was never installed. So that gives Jim and the leach field design orientation in the leach field in a different direction than what the design was and also by doing that allows us to bring the garage, the garage on the right side of the property and the driveway come in on the right side of the property, which before would have, was not sure if we could because no one knew at the time if the leach field was even installed. Um, if you go out and look at the lot, you can definitely see it was never there. The house that was started to be built is elevated up out of the ground about five or six feet and that's because the leach fields could require at least four feet of fill over the existing ground. Um, and so with that in mind, uh, the height of the leach field, the mounding over the leach field, and the grade, and the change in the grades will dictate how the house sits on the lot. Now, in order to get the right design, like I was saying, we have to know what the setback's going to be. Currently, it's 18 to 21 feet. Well, if the leach field's in the front of the house, you can't put the house in that lot if the setback's only 18 to 21 feet from the street. And in the character code ordinance, it's different than most ever ordinance I've had before to deal with in that it says they have a minimum of 18 feet, but a maximum of 21 feet. So that's the reason why we're here at the board. We want to be further back, but the ordinance says you can't be further back than 21 feet. Uh, and, and that 
scenario, you can't put the leach field on the property where it's where it should be. And um, along with the fact that uh, the other houses all sit back, and they sit back because this zone used to be a residential zone. I think it was either R3 or R4. I forget now which one. And that required a minimum setback of at least 30 feet. All the other houses developed on the street were developed with that ordinance in place. Um, except for, and even the one next door, which sits close to the street, that was before the board, and that was the only place on the lot they could put it because the lot was so <coughs> small. But all the other lots on the street are all large lots. And the code requires a maximum setback of 21 feet. Um, it would be uncharacteristic with the neighborhood that exists, uncharacteristic with the front yard appearance and aesthetics from the street, and it wouldn't allow the leach field to go in where it should be. So by setting the house back, firming up the location, getting to board to approve to it the location that allows for the um, uh, leach field and so forth and grading to be taken care of properly, at that point we come up with the final design of the house. But uh, there's just too many parameters right now to give a final design. So what we're here looking for is relief on the setback and such that we can proceed with the project. Thank you. A uh, couple quick questions before I let you jump. The, the leach field that was originally planned, they obviously felt there's a reason it needs to be in the front. The new plan shows it still needs to be in the front but turned differently. Why can't it be done in the back? The grade on the property goes uphill about four or five feet. And if you put the house in the front, the leach field will go in the back and it would still require about four feet of fill. So that would mean the backyard in the house would probably be up the top of the windows at the rear of the house because of the topography of the land. And where's the well located on the lot? I'm sorry? Where's the well located on the lot? I'm not sure where, to be honest with you. Public, public water, water on this lot. Yeah, it's public water on this. That's why I don't know where the well is. I didn't either. <laughs> that solves that problem. All right. Um, would anybody like so to So no adjustments questions? have to be made to put it in the front is what you're saying? What you're yes. saying to put it in the back, you have to put it up. Oh, yeah. It'd be, it'd be uh, uh, topography of the land and the amount of fill over the leach field is required on that type of soil would mean filling the backyard up. And if you move the house forward, the, the lot slopes to the street, and that would make the backyard almost up to the top of the windows at the back of the building. You're describing the house that I used to own. <laughs> 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 Just so I can stop one second. I didn't get a chance to have anything from Mr. Longstep. Anything you wanted to add or say? Nothing more than what I put in my comments. Okay. And then I'll go back to uh, board members. The original design of the septic system for Fred Poor According to Fred, the engineer that performed that said that that right, right front corner is the only place that it could go because of the, uh, the test that he did, the drilling test for whatever it is, pour beer down in the <laughs> uh, I don't know. So with that in mind, I don't think you've done anything other than rotate it, and I don't, and rotate it 90 degrees, but the foundation that's already on there was put on after the septic system was approved. Exactly. And that foundation is roughly 65 feet from the front property line. I went over there last night yeah. and I measured it. Yeah. Where is that? Do you mind me uh, jumping in there and just asking where is it relative to that picture there? Well, the <coughs> the house is not on there. The existing house is not on there, but it's right here. Is it uh, further? Do you know if it's further back or yeah, the same a little level? Further back. And when he says when he says the existing house, is that there's the main structure of, of a house on the foundation. Out behind that, there's an extensive foundation for garage and stuff like that, which was never yet constructed. So I'm just trying to find out what, how much closer to the road we are from the original foundation. Well, maybe Jim can answer that. I'm 
I'm, I'm basically saying what they're doing or what they're proposing to do is what was agreed to with the town under, under the prior zoning. Make sure, make sure, just so it's on the mic, let's make sure you get the mic here. You're a very good speaker, though. <laughs> <laughs> All I'm saying is what they're trying to do is basically what was approved by the town under the prior zoning regulations that Mr. Poor was trying to do. And, you know, I, I'm going to be perfectly honest with you. It's the only thing that can possibly be done. The engineer basically said that's the only place that it can go. So let's assume that that's the only place that it can go. And it's, it's got to be set back, I don't know, 60 feet, and I don't know, there's some crazy dimensions from the end of the septic system to the house that has to be covered. I mean, they're, they've done their homework. It's, so what they're proposing to do is nothing more than what's already on the lot as far as setback is concerned. Thank you. So. Down to the center. So let, let me try to figure out this thing. <laughs> There's a house that's there already. It's got a foundation under a portion of it, and it's got another part of a foundation there for something that would be built on, like a garage or something, correct? Well, I think he had a barn. He had a barn. He wanted a barn yeah. in the back. And the house that's on there is the original cottage up from the, they moved it from the parking lot. Moved it down there. Huh? Bought it from the town, I don't know, for 10 bucks or something like that, and moved it. Huh. So, Mr. Fisher, what are, we, what are we proposing to do with that entire structure that's there and the foundation that's there now? That will be eliminated. Okay, so that will be dug up? Yes. I mean, you couldn't build on, you couldn't do what they're looking to do, build on that, where you had wanted a six car garage in that space that already has a foundation? I'm not sure I understand the question. Like if there's already a foundation in place right now and there's a house sitting on it and then there's another portion of foundation already there that was there for a six car garage, there's no way to build the house on what was there? Um, you, you can't really use the integrity of a foundation for a new house that was designed for a previous house, for a different house. Um, there are certain elements that could be applicable to be sure, but generally speaking, if you've got a new house that's going up on a property, you want to be able to have a new foundation to be able to support it. I think the answer to your question is the, uh, the house that's there right now is just a blaze that indicated and the slab that's behind it that was prepping for a large garage is actually further back than we need to go. We don't want to go back that far. Um, what we're doing now is we're going back actually a little bit further than we were here asking for last time because of the parameters of the septic system, um, which digressing here a little bit, but essentially what that does is between the uh, health code that says you can only be X number of feet away or you have to be X number of feet away from a foundation, a habitable foundation, and from a grading perspective at the front of the lot based on the topography that's there and the distance away from lot lines is really only given the parameters of the septic center of the uh, test pits that we have on this lot, there's really only one place to be able to put that, to that meaning the septic system, to be able to minimize its impact and, and bring the house as far forward as we can relative to that, which is still further back than we were actually requesting last time. Uh, and the orientation that was there last time actually with the parameters that are still the same, as Ed had mentioned, the existing house that's there right now is actually further back than the one we're proposing. The one that we're proposing right now in terms of its uh, distance back from the right of way is about 60 feet <coughs> that point. The existing house is almost 70 feet back which is with the parameters of which would have been required for the previous septic orientation of the previous septic system. I guess my next question goes with it, Mr. Longstaff, is how do we look at this from the result of an action taken by the owner or prior owner? Does, does that even fall into play here where there's like a foundation already built there and there's a house that was dropped on top of it? Well, yeah, it's absolutely. It's one of your criteria it's for you to determine. It's for you to determine, but I mean, <laughs> There's an action being taken right now, or, or, or proposed to be taken. There was an action taken by our prior owner for, for certain. Um, and, you know, we've heard 
we've heard one of the board members say that that was the only place on the lot that a septic system could go, but that evidence hasn't been provided by any documentation. So that's what I would like to comment on. I mean, I you know I'm not very familiar with these wastewater disposal system applications, but I mean I did look at this, but I'm wondering what I mean the staff comments like that you know there's no supporting documentation that indicates this is the only viable location, and that's kind of what we're saying. Can it go in the back? Have you shown us that it can't? I think because that's what I am looking for. We took the existing septic system that had already been created or the test pit data from the soils data that had already been provided to the town and we tried to make it work with the data that we had as best as possible. And in doing so, in order to be able to minimize the impact of the setback, we turned it, which is perfectly viable based as long as you encompass the area, as long as any septic system encompasses the area of an existing test pit that passes relative to soils, um, it can be oriented anywhere around that test pit. So we oriented it to the least impact area that we could of the area. Now, can it be in the back? I mean, ostensibly, you can almost build a septic system on concrete if it's big enough to be able to do that. And I don't say that too facetiously. You can have very, very poor soils and still build a septic system almost anywhere, but it could be huge. Uh, if you have a new, well, we'll go into new system variances, but uh, uh, there are areas, to answer your question quite honestly, where any septic system can almost go anywhere. But is it prudent to be able to take maximum advantage of the soils on any given site when you have to have a septic system as opposed to a public wastewater system? So in this case, the answer to your question is no, there's no specific test pits in the back because of the topography back there. We wanted, wanted to be able to preserve the backyard, preserve the trees that are back there beyond this shell of, a, uh, of an old garage or of a, or a new garage. Um, and as Mr. Wilson had indicated, the topography tends to rise so that while you know anybody who does look out the windows, and this is from a practical perspective, um, you know most of us typically don't want to look into a raised bed septic system. Uh, can it go there? It can go anywhere. Should it go there? From an applicability of the lot standpoint, probably not. The best place we think we can put it, based on the information that we've already got and was supplied to the town, is where it is. So is anybody living or lived on in the house that's on the foundation now? Nobody's living in that house now. Has there been anybody? No. I don't think so. No. no. Not, not legally anyway. Well, that's what I'm talking about. I mean, that's the other thing that really concerns me with this is there was a septic system that was approved and designed and never was built. That's correct. <coughs> Mark? Yes, sir. Can I make a statement? Um, the character-based zoning for Higgins Beach is under review. Sure, a lot of the most people in this room know that. Um, and the organization from Boston that really came up with the, uh, the design of the character based zoning has proposed several changes. Uh, one of the changes is lowering the roof height and other minor changes all pertaining to primarily the basic 50 by 100 foot lot. Uh, uh, parcels of land at the beach. Uh, this past Sunday, they met with the neighborhood, the Higgins Beach neighborhood, to discuss this. And I took one of the these guys and I walked them down to that street there and I said, this has got to be changed. This is, it doesn't fit. All these houses are set way back. Uh, and now anybody who wants to make a change, we're forcing them to go forward. And I said, that's not the right thing to do. Nobody on the street wants any movement closer to the street. They want to keep it as far back as possible because that stretch of road is, even though it's 25 miles an hour, just like every other road on the beach, but it's hell bent for election when the surfers and the beach goers want to come in and go out. And it's uh, people are going 30, 40 miles an hour down through there. So it is, it's a safety issue. 
No, I can't say anything as to exactly what's going to happen, but the guy said Dave Earl is, it should be changed. And I don't know whether they're going to make the recommendation that they go back to, that strip of land was zoned differently than the rest of the beach. I think it's R4 was the original. <coughs> I don't know whether they're going to make the recommendation, go back to R4, manage it like that, or they'll make some tweaks in the, uh, the character-based zoning uh, to accommodate that stretch of land. <coughs> That, that is going to be coming before the, well, it's going to go back to the Long Range Planning Committee, uh, but I would imagine that's going to be done in the next week, uh, next month or so. And then from there, it's going to go to the uh, uh, town council. So I would assume that by September at the latest, those changes will be made. So basically what we're talking about here is we're talking about something that is going to be changed in a couple months. I just want to qualify that you, you're assuming that it will be changed. Just right, I mean, we need to base our decision on what the ordinance is as of today. I think it's valuable. Yeah, that you, and, right, not what I, mean, I, well, I think it's valuable because you went to the meeting and you heard them talk. I think it's valuable to get it on the record. But I just want to make sure that everybody understands that uh, we don't get a vote <laughs> on that. But... Well, if anything, too. I think Mr. Blaze is saying maybe you might want to do a little more research before, you know, a decision is made, and if this is going to change, it might not be an issue in a couple of months. Um, because, again, um, I think other people should do research, in my opinion. I'm Tim Dutton and I on the property. That, those new rule changes were, were placed after I bought the property. They're completely ridiculous for that area of Higgins Beach. He lives down there, he knows that. It's completely absurd that those rules were placed in my neighborhood. Similar, they were not placed in Kelly Lane for the same reason. It's a different character. I'm not trying to scam the board here or anything like that. I'm sure that you guys hear you know, things like that all the time. I'm trying to do what's right for the neighborhood. And you don't want a house 20 feet from the road in that neighborhood. You don't. And I've spent thousands of dollars since I bought the property designing a house that was completely appropriate for the neighborhood, paying taxes, coming here, probably designing another house because of the character codes. You're talking tens and tens and tens and tens of thousands of dollars and tens more if I have to, if I don't complete the project by March because you I already... You can give me a favor, sorry, just to direct, it, direct your comments to me specifically. I already have a construction loan. So you're talking a significant amount of money which nobody here would want to spend. Trust me. And I'm trying to do what's right. Thank and I'm... Thank you. Any questions? Might, well, I'm sure we'll have some. What I'd like to do is, just for a couple of cleaning up, this picture here is not relevant to this operation, correct? No, because it doesn't fit the character code. That's okay. I just want I, I want that removed from the files because that's not part of whatever we do. So if we could just make note that that's, that's being removed from the packages, that's not a plan that is currently on the table. Okay? Mr. Um, Chair? Yes. I think another concern I have is that we don't really have a design. No, we're not I don't think we've ever gone into this this way before where we've told them how to build the house. Well, I think what we're doing is they're asking for a very specific item. They're asking for re relief from the rules of setbacks. They're not, I don't believe it's our purview to get involved <coughs> with the design at this time. I know Mr. Longstaff may see it differently. But my personal opinion is we have to decide whether or not they meet the requirements for the practical difficulty variance based on the rules and based on the circumstances. But the house design for us is they've got the, they can pretty much design anything they want as long as at least currently it meets these code, these designs. But the location may be different than where they, they would have to be if we decide to approve it. Well, we went into this with another house down there that was being placed between two rather small houses that was a very big house. 
And my concern is, I mean, granted, it's out there, it's not right next door to one of the cottages and stuff, but we're, if we approve something, they could come and build that thing up to the maximum height they wanted to build it to, to what's now there. That would be their right, yeah. yeah and I, I guess I just don't, but do I don't feel comfortable with doing that and not seeing any design to see what we're looking at. I, I guess if I would come. the character code, why? Excuse, excuse me, hold, yeah. on. hold on, please. Um, what I'd like to do is let's start off by going through the requirements of the practice specifically variant. Then the board can kind of chat between ourselves and we'll go from there. So who would like to be the representative to speak to the, the requirements? We did that last time, so I'd like to do it again. Again, some of the members weren't here on that specific day, so I, I'd rather go through them. So the, the first is that the need of the variance is due to the unique circumstances of the property and not to the general conditions in the neighborhood. And for the record, due to the zoning regulations adopted uh, in December of 15, the proposed dwelling would be forced to be a mere 18 to 21 feet from the highly traveled way, which is Ocean Avenue. Uh, the character-based code district boundaries force the parcel to abide by regulations which are fitting for the actual beach neighborhood, which is the preponderance of Higgins Beach, but not for this particular artery, which is uh, southerly of Ocean Avenue, uh, the, the beach neighborhood. However, this is unrealistic for the locust parcel, uh, in addition, as stated, safety is a significant concern along a major artery in that area. And the uh, granting of the variance will not produce an undesirable change in the character of the neighborhood and will not have an unreasonably detrimental effect on either the use or the fair market value of abutting properties. Uh, quite the opposite, actually. The granting of this variance will enhance the character of the neighborhood because of the way the neighborhood is set out right now. Uh, conforming to the setback regulations of the uh, form-based code district will produce an, iron, an undesirable change in the character of the neighborhood. This setback, uh, its enhanced setback will allow the proposed dwelling to conform to the surrounding community much greater, to a much greater extent, thereby preventing uncharacteristic development, uh, as all but one dwelling in the area are actually set back more than 40 feet uh, as a minimum from the respective front property line. And the uh, practical difficulty is not a result of the action taken by the applicant or prior owner. That's one of the questions that uh, was asked earlier, but I'll change that. Uh, the practical difficulty is the direct result of re recent rezoning of that particular area. Uh, and that was done by the town in uh, December of 2015. Uh, Mr. Dutton has owned the property <coughs> since October of 15 and his plans to construct a home on the lot that would have been readily about allowed at the time of that purchase. And the no other feasible alternatives available to the applicant except the variance. Due primarily to the approved septic location, safety concerns along the artery and the neighborhood character, uh, there really are no other feasible alternatives uh, that is available to the applicant except for the variance that we're requesting. The approved septic test pit and minimum setback of 20 feet from the dwelling to the leach field makes no other feasible alternative for this property other than the variance. Uh, while the minute 18 to 21 foot setback are safety concerns, the architectural requirements based on the parcel forced the dwelling to construct a porch within that setback, even further enhancing the chances for uh, safety issues. On this particular section of Ocean Avenue, there is no alternative to allow the dwelling to be um, situated further back on the parcel, keeping with the preponderance of the properties in that neighborhood. Okay. And the uh, granting of the variance will not have an unreasonably adverse effect on the natural environment. Uh, not at all. Granting of this variance will result in bringing Mr. Dutton's property more nearly into conformance with the surrounding properties. It should be noted that uh, measuring the distance from the local parcel 50 feet, 500 feet south and 900 feet north along Ocean Avenue within the 40-foot right-of-way is a non of Spurwink Road. There's only one dwelling within that 40-foot wide right-of-way, and that one dwelling uh, is a non-conforming lot, which needed, a, ironically needed a variance to be able to build a house on it. Okay. Uh, and we're not in the flood zone. Nope. And uh, dimensional standards, those provisions of the ordinance which relate to lot area, lot coverage, frontage, and setback, including the buffer requirements. How do we sit with that? Any problems with that? No. And practical difficulty, the case where it's a strict uh, application of the dimensional standards of the ordinance to the property for which the variance is sought would both preclude a use of the property which is permitted in the zone in which it is located and also would result and significant economic injury to the applicant? Uh, it certainly would. The latter would preclude its use. Uh, any use can be utilized. I mean, uh, we've already gone through that, but uh, as far as the uh, economic viability relative to Higgins Beach, it would certainly preclude a you know, economic viability for that. Thank you. Um, Mr. Townsend, by the way, is here to address that if the board has any further questions toward that end. 
And we did have two letters. I'm going to read them in again just because uh, this meeting is, we've read it once before in the previous meeting, but reading again. Did we get any phone calls or letters since then? Okay, okay. Uh, this is from uh, Rick Doherty, uh, Rick and Deborah Doherty, 61 Ocean Ave. This is a written in connection with the support of Tim Dutton's application for a setback variance to build at 58 Ocean Avenue in Higgins Beach. We encourage and support such a setback approval by the zoning board that would be greater than the stipulated maximum of 18 feet from Ocean Avenue. Thank you for considering both Tim Dutton's request and our support of this request. And 61 Ocean is the smaller home in front, is that right? I believe that's the street over here. It's across the street. And then the next one, I think, is um, Kevin Coyne, and that's the smaller one in front. Okay. Uh, I'm writing this uh, email in support of Tim Dutton's request for variance on the maximum required setback of 21 feet and the desired setback of 40. Now, the new desired setback is what? Oh, we're, we're looking for 60 feet. It's going to be 59 feet and change, so we look at 60 feet because of the septic. Uh, I would like the following entered for the, for the record. I have owned 60 Ocean Avenue since 1992. I've witnessed the property at 58 Ocean Avenue evolve from an undeveloped vacant lot to the currently relocated structure that Mr. Dutton wants to demolish. I have full support. Uh, his, I fully support his project and feel the board should grant this variance. I realize the new zoning was developed to pre improve the beach and keep the designs consistent with the neighboring structures, but our section of the road is significantly different than the area starting at the parking lot and ending at the beach. From the accom accompanying aerial folio photo, you can see the housing density is much more congested near the beach with structures as close as 10 feet apart. Our houses are 30 to 80 feet apart. The fact that there are no structures beyond our houses should also be considered. Additionally, most of our houses are further back from the road and his desired location would be more appealing. The majority of the houses on our stretch of the road also have attached garages. So it, if that point ever comes up, then attached is a better fit. Finally, one important fact to consider is our section of the road is not a public sewer uh, meeting. Uh, we, the owners, should have more consideration or leeway as to the, where their st structure is placed. I have found the board's appeals to be very helpful and flexible in pursuing a similar project I recently completed on my property. And I hope Mr. Dutton is given the same amount of support. He loses his phone number. It's Kevin Coyne of 68 for now. So, so just to kind of get things in perspective here, if I can kind of tie it down, and please interrupt me, Mr. Lawrence, if you disagree with where I'm taking this. Um, we are looking at the issue of whether or not the current ordinance is applicable, number one, as opposed to the previous, which was the property was bought under. And we're only looking at whether or not the positioning of the home, whatever it looks like, is being addressed with that 60-foot change as opposed to 21 and 18. Covering that properly? Mm -hmm. Okay. So I'd really like to keep to that point because I think it's important we could get buried in the. In well, the, the use. I will correct you on one thing. Thank you. It's not a matter of deciding whether the former ordinance or the current ordinance is applicable. The current ordinance is applicable. We did not receive the application until the current ordinance was in place. So Thank you. It's immaterial when the lot was bought, it's immaterial how much work was done before. The application came in, the current or ordinance applied. That's, 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 an, that's, not that, a point that's an important case. point. Thank you. The rest Does everybody of understand that? Okay. Uh, and if anybody has a question, feel free to ask. I have no problem with that. So, what I think we ought to do is discuss the items individually and, and see where we're, where we're at. The need for the variance is due to the unique circumstances of the property, not to the general conditions of the neighborhood. Uh, I'll, I'll volunteer to just jump in here. Um, it's obviously the unique circumstance of the property, but it's also part of the neighborhood. I think it's part of it there, but I think the issue is the, the property. Um, I just came from septic system being installed um, in a different location, not at the site. Um, and usually they are going to be put where they make the most sense. Uh, I don't know if Frick did this. Who, who is the person? Mark Hampton did that. Hampton did this one. Uh, I don't remember who did the previous one. Was it the uh, same guy? So that doesn't really help us in that case. But the bottom line is 
I'm going to take his word for that because he would put it in the most logical place. That's what they do. As, as, as engineers, they're going to pick the most logical place. And it's two different owners at the time, so it's obviously not to drive the board in one direction, in my opinion. But that's not an intentional move. I also Mr. Like Chairman, the fact yes, one, one point of clarification. There hasn't been a second design. It's still the same design. They simply Just turned, turned it. The applicant's engineer turned the bed. There's only one design. It was the one done for the previous house. So okay. just to be clear on that. Good. And the turning, though, does help the situation as far as they, the previous one. They can they can do whatever they want. They, they did it based on the test pit data that was done before. It's not an, it's not an official mm -hmm. design, just to be clear. Good. Okay. Okay. Thank you. No, nope, that's important. All right. The next on that issue, what are people's thoughts on that from the board then? And, and it will be, I need to, I'm sorry, I broke a little protocol. Let me first open it to public if anybody would like to speak to this. So I'll open the public hearing. I've read the record, uh, the letters. Anybody from the public wish to speak? Good evening, everyone. My name is Scott Townsend. I'm Mr. Dutton's real estate agent. Uh, I do quite a bit of work down in the Higgins Beach area. Uh, very familiar with the new zoning uh, ordinance and was at many of those charrettes with Mr. Longstaff and the team doing that, so do understand it. Um, what I want to talk a little bit about um, is the financial hardship of what's being proposed um, by forcing him to comply with a 21 or 18 foot setback from the road. Um, is the actual economic hardship that would come from a house being that close to a busy road? Uh, if you speak with an appraiser, and I spoke with three prior to putting this together this evening, and depending on the value of the property, there's anywhere between a 5 and a 15 percent adjustment for a home that's on a double yellow line, which this section of Ocean Avenue is, versus a home that's set back in a neighborhood. So you can imagine the closer you move your home to a busy road, the bigger impact that's going to have on the value of the real estate. So that not only comes from if Mr. Dutton decides not to move forward with anything and sell the lot as it is under the new current zoning, I should say the current zoning, uh, it's going to have an impact on him, his ability to sell that and maximize his value on that and even get his money out. Uh, it's also going to affect the value of the home that he builds there. Um, we're not talking about a, a cheap little small house. This is going to be a beautiful home that's going to add value to the tax basis. Um, and it's going to be a deterrent if that has to be close to the road. Within that thought process, the same goes for the raised septic bed out the back window. Um, if you are in a home, you've heard all heard the term curb appeal. Um, that actually equates to dollars and cents. Uh, and if a home has to look out at an eight-foot septic bed behind it versus a nice rolling front lawn, um, that affects the value of that property for resale. Um, and then the final thought that I just want to leave you with is, is the alternative um, of what could be done on this property. We're talking a lot about the character code. Um, for me, standing back, it's an issue of common sense. Um, I understand that Mr. Dutton is unfortunately in a vortex between things of happening, but we are dealing with the current code and the law, and that's what has to be addressed. But under the current code, um, the highest and best use for this property is actually to be split. It's a half acre lot. Um, what Mr. Crockett referred to um, with the houses that were real close together, you could fit eight of those lots or more on Mr. Dutton's lot. We're dealing with a half acre lot. It meets under the current code, it meets the requirements to actually be split. There is the road frontage there, and you could put two smaller houses, 18 to 21 feet from that right away. Um, and that's actually the highest and best use for the property, but that's not in the code of the neighborhood. That's actually less in the code, and I don't think there's any member of Higgins Beach or Ocean Avenue or this board that would want to see that down there. That, that wasn't the intent. So um, again, just touching on the economic injury to Mr. Dutton, should this be forced, I know he talked a little bit about his loan and those aspects. I'll let him discuss that more, but just from a resale perspective, um, the closer that home goes to the road, the less valuable it is. Thank you. 
Thank you. If you could hold one second, I think one. Yeah, yeah I just had a quick question because it was represented to us that he, that lot was bought as like a teardown. Is that correct? Yeah, what, what's there is not habitable, as it, you know. It, it, when he purchased it, though, I mean, it, he wasn't buying a big house. He didn't spend a lot of money on the no. lot. What you're saying is he's not. He did get spend it. a lot of money on the lot. But it wasn't. It didn't have a. It was just the land, correct? It, it, it was the land. So he bought it as like a buildable lot, not. Yeah, a buildable lot that's a half acre at Higgins Beach on a busy road that, at the time, which I realize is no longer relevant, right. at the time could have a nice setback. And it's something that everyone that I've talked to, including other real estate agents, if presented at the time, would you pay more money or less money for a lot that you could have your home further back from that busy road or closer to? Unanimously, everyone said that they would pay more money for a lot that they could have their home further set back from a busy road than closer to. And Mr. Blaze referenced the speed on that road. It is 25 miles an hour. I walk it every morning with my dogs heading to the beach. And I guarantee you that 99% of the people go over that, including myself at some times. I'm guilty of it. I think we all are. Um, but the closer you are to a busier road, the noisier it gets, the safetier issue it gets, and uh, it does affect value. Uh, and that's what I'm here to talk about is that forcing him to put his home there is going to affect the value. Mr. Townsend, if you don't mind, I'd like to, yeah. and I'll let you jump back in if you'd like to. But on the criteria, the sad reality is value isn't addressed. It is important in the overall picture, but I think more importantly is what you mentioned regarding number two, which is the granting of the variance will not produce an undesirable change in the character of the neighborhood and will not have an unreasonably detrimental effect on either the use or fair market value of the budding properties. You're, you're an expert in your field. Um, have you done any research as to whether or not that lot can be broken under the new, under I, the new code? Un, under the new code, it meets all the criteria to be split. It has the minimum lot size. It has the road frontage. Yeah. But I can tell you in doing that, even though it says the word character code and what it's being referenced, that's not in character with the neighborhood. But that is the highest and best use for that property from a pure real estate perspective. Thank you. Ms. Shoup. No, I mean, I think it's not clarified between, you know, the, the rules say economic injury. There's a difference between economic injury and what someone wants to get in the return from their well, original it, it, investment. It's not that. It, it, it is an ex If he were to just sell the lot now, forget building, forget he's going to build anything, that lot is not worth more than when he bought it. It's worth less because of where it has to be built now. So that's economic injury, clear, plain and simple. And Significant. Mm -hmm. Significant, I yeah. I just have you. It's, it's actually, again, a, it's really not one of the requirements for this. Economic injury is it? I thought, I thought it was. It, I apologize. It, it, some of them do. Uh, yeah. That specific one doesn't. But I think I'm glad you brought up number two, which I think is, is an interesting issue. Uh, and I do think, I think we can all agree that Different people have different views on economic injury. Mm -hmm. That's okay. You got that on the record, which I think is important. I know you have a question. Yeah, my question, the last meeting we had, um, the question was raised about the real estate agent and selling the property. Yeah. You stated that you were down there. You were at all the meetings. You saw everything that was going on. Yeah. You knew all the ordinances. You knew all the codes. Why didn't you have a conversation with him about that, that he couldn't do what he's looking to do? Well, first of all, uh, he bought it prior to that going he into bought place. It after. No, he bought it in October of 2015. It was the new zoning went in December of 2015. So chronologically, the zoning went in after he purchased the property. Okay. Um, <clears throat> Mr. Longstaff might be able to attest that under all the discussions, the original discussions, um, that section of Ocean Avenue was not part of the new character zone. It was referenced, and the whole purpose of the new character zone was for the smaller 50 by 100 lots down at Higgins Beach where everyone was coming for a variance because there wasn't enough room. There was 30 foot setbacks from the road, 15 feet from the side and rear, and everyone needed to get a variance. And that was the reason for the character code coming into the place. So this section of Ocean Avenue was a tag on at the end, and it wasn't something that was being discussed during those charrettes, if you will. So it wasn't relevant. Yeah, actually, that's not exactly true. It was discussed. It wasn't discussed at length, but it yeah. wasn't discluded. It wasn't yeah. excluded either. Yeah. It wasn't included. It wasn't excluded. It really wasn't discussed a lot. And yeah. admittedly, it was one of those. It actually was discussed under the guise of being included in the commercial. It was, yeah, that, again, the commercial it was discussed because, because there was a former store right you, you, you are correct, yeah. but the, yeah. in, in when what Mr. Crockett's asking about is the impact of where his setback could be on his house and what he could build. Um, 
you know, th there wasn't an impact. The discussion around it, and Mr. Longstaff's correct, was the, it was going to have more of a commercial zone, and the big concern was that people could put commercial entities along that area of Ocean Avenue, and that was the discussion. And, and that's exactly right, and that's why it reverted back to the residential zone that the rest of Higgins Beach had. Mm -hmm. they, and, didn't, they didn't want commercial. They didn't want, they didn't want, they didn't want the commercial. They didn't want to promote commercial development along yeah. that stretch, and that's, I just wanted to clarify that yeah. it was discussed. It was, you're absolutely correct, it, it wasn't adopted by the town until uh, it was late November or December of 2016. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah. 16? 15. 2015 and 15. December 2010. Yeah. And Mr. Gargan, just to address that, I mean, it, it's a constant challenge that I have. Uh, I'm in the process of selling a home down there right now. And as Mr. Blaze referenced, there was meetings this weekend, and there is a plan on making changes. And I've got clients that are spending three quarters of a million dollars on a property that want to know what they can do. And I say, you know what, that's a great question. Um, I can tell you what you can do under the current zone, but there are discussions about that changing. So there really isn't a clear answer. Do you direct your buyers to go to the town? Yeah, they, uh, all my buyers, they get um, that new zoning criteria. And oftentimes- I'm saying, so like when, you, when he was looking at the property and said, you know, I want to rebuild, I mean, you knew they were talking about the ordinances. Did you yeah, say, you know, you really got to go it, talk it, to the town? It, it honestly, Karen, Mrs. What is it, Shoop? Yeah. Uh, it, it's really not not about that because at the time the law was in place, he could do whatever he wanted to do there within the current zoning, and because that changed, it's not, and then it's going to change again, and he can. So what I'm here to talk about tonight is the economic injury and the financial hardship, and what Mr. Maroon addressed upon is the highest and best use for that property is that it could be split, and two properties could be there, and nobody wants to see that. And it is a difficult position that I'm in right now, telling people to go talk to the town unless they get plans. Brian's not going to be able, Mr. Longstaff's not going to be able to answer that many of their questions. So what I do do is I direct them to professionals that know a lot more about that, like um, Mr. Fisher. See, the thing was in the last meeting we asked the applicant about that, mm -hmm. if he had been able to attend day of the meetings or knew, knew what was going on or had any insight on it, he said he, he mm -hmm. didn't have any idea what was happening. Yeah, the, those meetings occurred. I can go get the chronological timeline if you want to continue to drill me about this, but those meetings actually occurred prior to Mr. Dutton putting them under contract. So he didn't actually have a contract on the property, or we didn't even know that there was interest in that property. He actually had another property under contract down there. Um, so it wasn't relevant at that point in time. There wouldn't have been meetings for him to attend because he wasn't purchasing that property. Okay. Um, so I took up the public uh, open. Anybody else from the public wish to speak? Walt Wilson again. Just one thing on clarification. The reason why Scott brought up that uh, significant economic injury and so forth, it's actually part of the definition of what a practical difficulty is, and we are here under practical difficulty, and that was to show that there is an economic injury to the owner if he doesn't receive the setback that he's requesting. Uh, thank you. Anybody else wish to speak? Mr. Fisher, can I ask you a question regarding number one? I'm going to close the public hearing section of the meeting. Uh, the need for the variance is due to the unique circumstances of property and not for general conditions regarding the septic. Did you do a uh, topographical uh, design layout, uh, elevations? Did you do any elevations on the property? In other words, the difference between the height. We're hearing eight feet. We're hearing it's going to be up to the windows. It's going to, but that's all kind of like. You know, what does that mean? Well, it's relative to the eventual design of the house. But to answer your question as far as topography, no, we didn't actually do a, a full topographic survey there. Did you? Were you on the site? Mm -hmm. From your ex again, I'm, I rely on your, your experience. What are we looking at as far as the, is that an accurate statement based on the top the, the topograph topography you may not have measured but witnessed? Are we talking about a, a light in the back there if we put a septic tank there, a septic system there, or is it are we exaggerating? Well, the, the lowest section of the lot is essentially where the septic system is shown to be right here. Um, and Mr. Longstaff is right. It hasn't been specifically designed. The design that was right in here was actually flipped this way. This would actually <coughs> have to be designed for a house that goes there. Um, you typically don't, long answer to your question, but you typically don't design a septic system until you know 
know the specific <coughs> of the house that it's going to be serving. Um, nonetheless, as far as the answer to the question is concerned, this is the area where the fill would be brought into uh, relative to the soils that are already applicable to the septic system. So I think as somebody mentioned earlier, it's, uh, the, the lot is conducive. It's lower in this section, slightly higher over here, slightly higher over in the edge over in this section, and then it rises up to where the house is, and that the existing small house, and it's got that foundation for the garage that's behind it, and this whole level of the, this whole level of the property is higher, considerably higher than this section that's right down in here. And the house we're proposing, essentially, as you can see, it's right in the middle. What does considerably higher mean in your, in your vernacular? Well, it's not a cliff um, or a bluff or anything like that. I, I don't know specifically because we didn't do the topography. Sure. Um, I would say if you're looking at the difference in height between this section right down in here, please don't hold me to that, but you're probably looking at about six to eight feet. Okay. Just from natural grade. Mr. Chairman? Right. Yes, Jim. You might want to refer to the one of the drawings that you submitted at the existing uh, uh, boundary with pins. Uh, it does have some topography on it. I'm not sure if that's, I, I assume that's existing topography. I've got it up on the screen so that you can see at least existing that, for example, down here near the temporary service, it's, there's a, a, a contour with 20. And then if you scroll to the back of the lot, you're seeing contours with, um, whoops, too far. You're seeing contours with 22 back here. So, I mean, there's, there's, and there's some with 19. There's a contour with 19 on it here um, and here. So you're, you're talking roughly three feet of elevation difference from the front to the back. Would that be a fair I think from the, from the front to where the, back, where the, uh, the garage, the slab for the garage is, um, we didn't actually do that topography, but I mean, Brian's right, it's on the plan. Um, it and then it the goes best, beyond that. The best information we have right now is it, it, what's behind that, because that's that's the, the the area we'd be talking about putting the septic system is back further, right? No, the, the area that we're talking about is up front. I mean, if if we were talking about doing it in the back, in the back, yes. How far be, back? Would it would be back. It would have to be back here, somewhere in the neighborhood of this foundation, this concrete foundation. Is that the lot line, the back lot line of the property, right there? Yes. Anything else you'd like to add as far as that's concerned? Uh, pursuant to any questions that you have? Board? All set? Discussion for this one, sir. Okay, thank you. All right, so we're back to the board for discussion. Um, the need for the variance is due to the unique circumstances of the property and not to the general conditions of the, in the neighborhood. Um, my, my personal opinion is it's absolutely the, the property. Um, but it is also part of the neighborhood, and the part of the neighborhood part that it's actually good because I think you're right about the fact of splitting. It makes more sense for highest and best use. I'd buy it and split it um, because I think it's probably worth the same amount of money as two as it would be one. So it's an interesting argument, and that is inconsistent with the current circumstances in that section. I personally do not believe that that plan that was designed fits that neighborhood. I, I don't believe it makes, it's, it's done, it's written, it's what it is, but it is inconsistent with character-based studies. It doesn't make sense. So I, I've got a rule that I'm looking at but I'm looking at the definition, character-based, and I don't see that as character-based. So when I look at number one, the needs of the variance is due to the unique circumstances of the property and not the general conditions of the neighborhood. I think it's just absolutely the, the problem is the, the, the house itself, and it doesn't make sense, in my opinion, again, it's only my opinion, uh, to put something like that on that road 20 feet up front. You would not do that on the main drag. And it's basically just like the main drag. Um, so, to me, although there are there were plans that were design, designed, those plans were also it was understood that those plans would be looked at after a period of time. Unlike the regular codes, which are looked at as needed, they did say that this was going to be something that would be reviewed and tweaked. So I think that gives us some liberty. That's again my opinion. Um, so I do believe number one uh, is that 
I don't, I'd love to hear other board's opinions on that, board members' opinions on that. Mr. Chairman, I tend to agree with you on your opinion on number one. Um, the comments that I have mostly pertain to a lot of the, uh, the character-based questions that are part of this application. Um, so a lot of my opinions are going to wait until number two, six, and potentially and four as well. Um, but uh, based on the information that's been presented here, I'm trying to look at this as a very, uh, you know, as basic and straightforward as possible. Um, I, I tend to agree with you that um, they do need a variance and sort of because of the unique circumstances of this property. Board members' comments? Yeah, I, I would agree on that as well. That you're right, it does have both, so I think it's more of a property. I would add to that that, and it ties back to the, uh, the applicant or prior owner, um, this was pushed on them by the town. The, the, the town made this nonconforming. They didn't. The town did. And I philosophically have a problem with that. No, and again, that's not a part of the rules. But I do have a problem with the fact that they lose rights because the town voted to basically cut them out of that. I don't know whether they don't have a court. But to me, although it's, we're looking at the new rules, the town, in essence, created the problem that brings them here today. And uh, everybody can have a different view on whether that's right, wrong, good, or bad. But that's what happened. Um, so it just ties to my point. Anything else on one? Well, I, mean, I think that's the argument anyone can make before the board is that because of the ordinance by the town, that's why they're before us today. I think what concerns me is the town hired these very professional people to create this plan. And you said it's only 18 houses or so that are on that strip there that got pulled into this new thing. So, I mean, they must have at some point said, you know, either we're including them or they're not. I mean, thought was put into them being part of this ordinance and being part of this. So when I look at the general conditions of the neighborhood, I think of the ordinance, and it's because of the ordinance and the, that's the general condition of the neighborhood. Mr. So Longstaff, just a question for you regarding those meetings. When you said it was briefly discussed and then defaulted to, oh, I don't want to put words in your mouth. It was, it was briefly discussed about making that a commercial zone. And then the people didn't want that. I didn't go to any meetings intentionally. What, do you have any, any recollection of what transpired? Was there much detail talked about? Or did they just say, there, we'll just put it under that? And was it just sort of casually put in place or was there detail going into that area? Because it seems so inconsistent. Well, there wasn't a great deal of there wasn't a great deal of discussion over it. It was clear from uh, it was clearly consensus of the group that attended the charrettes that they didn't want to see that zoned as the commercial, similar to where the breakers and the market and, and it, because those were just the, the two or three. There was like maybe three or four properties that were zoned for commercial use, the inn, you know, so on and so forth. They didn't want to see that zone there. <coughs> it was the gateway to. Higgins Beach, and therefore, by default, it went back into the residential, the, co the, the coastal residential district. There was no discussion on leaving it as is. There was, you know, R3, R4. Uh, there was no discussion on <coughs> it. Um, th th there simply wasn't a lot of discussion about that stretch of road. And I, mm. think, I think Ed would back that up uh, based on what um, our conversations with the consultants were, mm. even last Sunday. Um, it wasn't. It wasn't because there was a resounding yes, we want it to be coastal residential. It wasn't a resounding no, we don't want it. It was just thought that commercial wasn't appropriate, but that they wanted to try to have that character continue on out. And they were probably thinking more of the properties closer to Greenwood Avenue, not closer to Spurwink. This one's about halfway in between. Mm -hmm. So it's. It, I, I can't really state that there was any, you know, specific line of thought on that. It's just the way it turned out. And if this chose to be approved, being set back, that doesn't excuse them from the design standards of the property. We don't correct? know that yet. And, and again, to clarify some of Ed's statements, um, 
we definitely are going to look at that stretch of road. He's absolutely right on that. It's not going to happen with this first batch of amendments because we want to try to get those amendments taken care of quickly. I think this deserves another neighborhood meeting to discuss exactly what we do want to do there. Do you want to just put it all back into R3, R4 the way it was, no design standards, no character standards? Do you want to have the character standards but, but give it the 40-foot setback? You know, we, we don't know, and we want to really get back to the neighborhood and talk, talk about that because there wasn't a great deal of discussion about that the first time. We want to get it right this time. We don't want to be back here arguing about this again. So if we approved this for the sake of discussion, under the current rules, he would need to follow the current design standards? As it stands building. right now, you're going to, you, it's a practical difficulty variance. You can only grant relief on the dimensional standards in the ordinance. So the good news is if this were approved, I, I look at it as good news, is it the building would, in fact, have to be consistent with the design. Yeah, and I don't know if that's good news or not, because, as I say, we haven't had those discussions. None of those houses look like the character standard. No, yeah. So if you want to, I mean, you can stand here and bat that ball all night long. Well, I'm just yeah, saying. So I, mean, I don't know how far you want to take this, but none of those saying. houses look like no. the character standard. But they would have to meet, today, if, they, if we approved this today, two weeks from now, they'd have to be to the character standard. That's correct. That's what I want to hear. Yep. Don't not. What, what I want to hear is it doesn't really matter. Yeah. But I think it's an important point because I, I don't think we're throwing away character standards here. We're talking about setbacks. And I think that's, a, to me, an important piece of the puzzle. Uh, number two, the granting of the variance will not produce an undesirable Mark, change in the excuse character. Excuse me, Mark. Yeah. Can I just ask one question? Sure. Is this the only lot on that strip that doesn't have a home on it? other than the fact it's got a house on a foundation. Is this the only lot? I don't know that, Ed. You drive the road every day. You tell <laughs> me. I, <know. laughs> I can't think of any. Uh, if you could do me a favor, Mr. Thompson, I can't hear you, so if you just take the microphone. I, I believe that's the case unless you research some further that could actually be split if they met the guidelines under the current zone, but they're doesn't exist any current buildable lots um, right now on that section of Ocean Avenue. The only other thing there that's not built upon is that Piper Shores has a ownership out to um, Ocean Avenue as part of their land, uh, and that's more of a right-of-way than anything a structure would be built on. So a good argument would actually be if they wanted to make a change to the 50 feet, they ought to do it now. <laughs> Four changes again, if it does. So consequently, what we're talking about is we're talking about one property on a street that's got all the houses that are set back and everything is 40 feet back and everything like that, and now we're arguing about having to move one house because it's not completely built forward. Doesn't make sense to me. Okay. Anybody else wish to comment? The, uh, Granting of the variance will not produce an undesirable change in the character of the neighborhood and will not have an unreasonably detrimental effect on either the use or the fair market value of the abutting properties. Uh, uh, Mr. Blaze, I tend to agree with you. I think changing it to the current new rules would actually make it out of character with the neighborhood. Um, but the current new rules are in place. But I would say that the best thing to do is build it you are bringing it closer to the front, so you're bringing it more in line, correct? It's going to be closer than where it was, foundation. From the found existing foundation, so make closer it more, to the front. More in compliance, <laughs> but not compliant. That's correct. And to me, I, again, I, I think it was a mistake. I can't, that's just the only way I see it, is that it was an, over <coughs> it was an oversight. But that's, again, nothing to do with this. I'm looking at it as does that affect the character? I think the best thing to do is build it where it is. I personally like the design standards, so if it were me on the decision-making board, I'd probably say uh, build the design standards, but don't worry about the distances. But that's me, and so who knows where that will fall. Other members' thoughts on that? Whether it was, whether it was a mistake or not, it's, it's not. Um, I don't believe it's our place to really um, use this as the platform to speculate on what could or could not have happened. We have this clearly in front of us. 
Um, from again, from my my standpoint, looking at this as basic and as simple as possible, we're looking at um, as far as character and conforming to the surrounding neighborhood. Um, dimensionally, this will be out of character if they have to build it to meet the current code that close to the road. All the other homes in that area, regardless of how they look cosmetically, um, this home will be out of place because of its proximity to the road. You're talking about if it's done closer or if it's done the way that it's If it's done closer. What they're proposing now puts it more in conformance with the character of the neighborhood because it would be set back from the road further than this one. Than so just, just to tie into that, my, my opinion of neighborhood when I talk about this is strictly <coughs> Ocean Avenue, not, because I think Ocean Avenue is not the same neighborhood. Uh, no, I, and I completely agree. So and that's where you're going with it. I yeah. just want to make sure yeah. I was no, understanding and, it. And that's part of my point here is, is that uh, regardless of uh, whether if it does get approved, they're still required to meet the character standards when they build the structure, you know, the height requirements and so on and so forth. Um, and for me, I'm thinking about this dimensionally and to avoid circul circular discussion a little bit further. Um, we can't really speculate on what might or might not happen or what might happen in the future in a few months that might get approved or might not get approved. Um, we're looking at an application that they want to have extra footage back from the road and I, I think they should have that. Okay. Any members wish to speak on number two? Okay. Now we're not voting on any of this right now. I just want to get the opportunity to, to debate this amongst the board and uh, have, a, have a reasonable well, discussion. Mr. Chairman, I think you have a golden opportunity to have findings of fact and conclusions of law as you discussed, and then you don't have to go back over it again. I, mean, I, think you, I think you're doing that, so why not Why not take a vote on each item as you discuss it? And I like dragging these things on much longer than I that. really don't like dragging <laughs> these things on at all. <laughs> no, I think it's a great idea. All right, everybody comfortable with that? So let me go back to number one then. The needs of the variance is due to the unique circumstances of the property and not to the general conditions of the neighborhood. Uh, all in favor of that is met. That would be, I'm sorry, is that four and uh, opposed? One. All right. The granular variance will not, and the previous comments, could you put those on as part of the record? And number two is the same thing. The granular variance will not produce an undesirable change in the character of the neighborhood and will not have an unreasonably detrimental effect on either the neighborhood and will not have an unreasonably detrimental effect. I, I'm sorry. Uh, either, <laughs> just had to read the line over again. Uh, either the use of fair market value of abutting property. Um, any more discussion on that item? Well, Mr. Chair, what I'm looking at is I'm, I can't tell by this picture because I can't tell if it's structure or lawn, but in our packet there's pictures of the houses on the road. Mm -hmm. Some look like they're very close, but I can't tell. The one next door away. to them is. The one next door to them that wrote the letter uh, is very close to the road and he doesn't like it. Kevin that's Kevin Coyne. There is one more that's pretty close. It's like there's two, one on each side. The one that's right next to Higgins Creek Road. I think that's pretty close. Yeah, that's close. Yeah. yeah. Are those within 20 feet or are those further back still? The two. You can't really tell because the picture's so small. It has no measurements, I'm not sure. I just know driving down there, to me, it's consistent with Ocean Hat. Um, there, are, there are some measurements on here, like there's arrows mm -hmm. indicating 44 feet. Which piece are you looking at? This one right here. Can I have your glasses? <laughs> <laughs> um, 44 feet from the house that's on the corner of Higgins Creek and Ocean Avenue, and then the next house down, they have indicated 50 feet. Oh, yeah. uh, the house across the street from that, continuing Plainview South, is 46 <laughs> feet. Uh, the house adjacent to that, 53 feet, and then across the street from there is Mr. Coyne, I think he said his name once, is right up next to him. Um, and then the house just south of 58 Ocean Avenue, it's indicated 58 feet, and then the house across the street from them is 76 the feet. <laughs> Where are you seeing Visually these measurements? Visually challenged. It's right on, it's on this paper. So, so I can't see it. Man, I'm worried. <laughs> I'm used to reading music at night. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, I I'm not 
sure that's relevant to this conversation. But <laughs> 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 you must have some really good magnifying on those glasses. Because there's no way I can see this. Leroy, you can see it right over there. Okay, yeah, that looks better. <laughs> yeah, so, so those are the lines, 44, 50, 46. Oh, yeah, okay. So again, back to my point, and number two, dimensionally looking at this, that puts it more in conformance Thank you for that up. characteristically. Much easier. <laughs> Absolutely. In my opinion. No, I, I would tend to agree. Any other comments on number two? No, I would concur. Um, even though we're looking at the standards that show us it should be, we can see pretty much everything there is within that dimension. So it does meet more of the character of the neighborhood being further back. And I think that's, again, back to this, the name, character-based development, I think that's an important piece of the puzzle. I, would, I think it would, would be good that we probably could have do somebody some type of finding a fact that we're talking about this one road. Um, I, I think that's very important. And feel free. No, I'm, ju I'm just saying I, I just skip something that we're just, in this instance, we're talking about this one road, not the, the community. My, okay. uh, my opinion is, I've, I've, as I see it, and uh, let other board members please challenge it if they disagree, to me, this section of Higgins Beach is not the same as Higgins Beach proper. It is part of Higgins Beach, but that section specifically, from speed to width of road to parking to everything about it, is now parking is the same. I just want to point out one thing, Mr. Chairman. Sure. sure. <laughs> These dimensions are look like they're going to the edge of pavement, not the right of way. So you want to deduct about another. You know, 10 or 15 feet off each okay. of those dimensions. That's good to know. You know, just play fair. We're going to play fair. I'm not saying the applicants are cooking the books here, <laughs> but. <laughs> 31, 40, 34. I, and that's a good point. I, I'm just looking at it. You know, we deduct 15, we're you know what I'm doing? Is I'm, I'm not arguing the point. I just wanted to point out it looks like the dimensions are to the edge of pavement, not the right of way. My, so my the setback is taken from right of way. Yeah, I, my, my gut is that we're talking about just from me not viewing measurements, but looking where the old lot was, the old cement foundation was, as you can see, and the house south of that, I guess it would be east of that. Um, I would bet that it'd be about the same distance. <coughs> Does that make sense? Not that picture, but. Uh, 58, yeah. Let's vote on number two. I, right. I wouldn't say that we take it out of the Higgins Beach community because it's in there. It's in there. It's but in I there. This is just an exception to the rule, I would think. I, 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 think no, I wouldn't say we should take it out. Of oh, no, I, 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 I agree with you. I mean, again, not to speculate on something that's, you know, not written yet, but this should be sort of a, an addendum to this area that says this particular area can have its own thing. Just, our, just as other areas have their own thing. Correct. In the same zone. Right. So number two, um, all in favor of number two being met. That's unanimous. Okay, thank you. The practical difficulty is not the result of an action taken by the applicant or prior owner. Uh, to me, this is pretty straightforward. The town put new rules in and they're ostensibly stuck with those new rules. Um, so to me, based on that assumption, the, the non-compliance was not created by the applicant or the prior owner. I mean, my understanding, uh, Mr. Longstaff, is that this is a buildable lot, correct? So he can build on it. So my interpretation of this number three question is he's before us because he wants to build on his buildable lot out of conformance. So he's here today because of his action. He has a buildable lot but he doesn't want to build on it the way he would like and to get the most economic return that he would like. But he's here today before us because of that action. But that's not the, if you read the thing, I just want to make sure we're on the same page. Practical difficulty is not a, res of a result of an action taken, so it's past tense. So we're not talking about future tense, we're talking about past tense. Did the applicant do something that created his own nightmare? Did the prior owner do something that created his own nightmare? Both of those answers be no. Moving it forward is creating his own nightmare, but that's not that the answer to the question would be. You follow me? Because it's totally past tense there. So that the point of that is, did, did they do something? They got them into this mess. Now they're trying to get bailed out. And uh, well, they bought. The only question ahead. I have for that is, Mr. Fisher, I know we're not talking to you right now. We're doing this as a board. 
But can you clarify, he purchased this after the tax went in or before? Before. And, and to, to comment on that, with regard to your comments, Ms. Shu, um, the, the, the property was purchased before the new ordinance went in for Higgins Beach. And it doesn't matter how long they were talking about it, up until that point, anything could have changed the day after or the day before that it went into place. You know, it, it can only be judged on from when the ordinance actually took place and went into, went into law, or rather, you know, went into the town. <coughs> so I have, to agree, I have to agree with this one that it is not the result taken by the applicant because he purchased the property with the option in front of him to build it however he wanted to build it before the Higgins Beach Ordinance came into play. That's my but thought. I mean, he didn't submit a building application before that would be true. the changes. So he just bought it as a buildable lot, not as a buildable lot that he can build set back, just as a buildable lot. And so I think sure. I'm having a hard time understanding That's a true statement. how he has a buildable lot, but he wants to use it a different way than what the town is saying. That's a true statement. Allowed. That, that is absolutely a true statement, but it doesn't apply in, in my opinion. I, again, I'm, just, I'm just one guy, right? So. Well, that's why I was kind of asking Mr. Chair the questions of the realtor as to if, if there was a discussion about what was going on there when he purchased it before the problem. You know, you may want to get something in on this right away because this is going to change. The, the problem is that even that, not, not doing something, he didn't create that. It wasn't, it, action requires mo movement. There was no movement, nothing happened. So that, did they create this problem? No, they, they may have gotten in there too late, but they didn't create the problem. And you have to remember on these, on these ordinances, if anybody's been on the, on the board, uh, the, the council, these things can change up to the last minute. I mean, you can be sitting there at the table and somebody says, I think all the houses should be pink, and bang, they raise their hands, it's done. So the, the problem with that, the system we live with, is it's a moving target right up until the end. And so I don't know in, uh, how, it, you know, he may even, uh, I'm, I'm, again, I, I believe that neither the applicant nor the prior owner had any effect on this. It was done to them, and this would be equivalent to a town putting a road next to somebody's house, and they take it by eminence domain. We don't use eminence domain in Scarborough that I've ever seen, but say they did, and they made that house, which I've had one of those come here. The the, the road made the house non-conforming, and I don't know what it was. It just goes back quite a few years ago. I think actually Ed, you may have been on the board when that happened, and so it was the 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 house wasn't what created the non-conformance. It was the road that created the non-conformance, and it was plunged upon, it was forced upon the house. So by default, the house now was quote unquote guilty of not meeting the requirements, yet it had nothing to do with it. It was forced on them. There's two things I'm struggling with on this one. Um, one is that it, it was an inaction. It wasn't an action, it was an inaction, inaction. And the other one is basically when the purchase the property went into effect, the house was built back further, or this house that was sitting on the foundation that no one was living in, was built back further. So anybody purchasing the property from the prior owner would think, okay, I can build back here too. So is that an action of the prior <coughs> owner that we need to talk about? Because if it's sitting there and you buy a property and the house is 40 feet back, your assumption is you can build 40 feet back. No, 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 no. You can't even look at it like that because when he purchased it, it was what was going on there was perfectly legal. And it was approved by the town. Yeah, that structure was perfectly legal. What I'd like everybody to do is kind of direct the traffic to me just so we keep the... the um, that, that's just what my thought process is on it. Maybe I, I, I think that, that's the wrong way. I, I no, I, I think what's really important is this is why it's important we discuss it thoroughly, and I do think this is we probably won't see another one of these. Um, <laughs> the only one. <laughs> but um, <laughs> I, I think what's important is everybody's points are relative, relevant, and, and a lot of this is ambiguous. And it's intentionally that way. And a lot, of, uh, uh, a lot of it is more black and white. I believe that what the building envelope was is what he bought. When he bought the houses, he bought a, build, he bought a building envelope. So whether that structure was at the very end of the building envelope or the very beginning of the building envelope, he bought a building envelope. Every right in the world to knock that thing down and put it where he wants to put. Rules come in, they get changed. It's now thrust upon him 
that those, what he thought he could do, he couldn't do. And so consequently, I view that as he didn't create that problem. Um, and, and so he, and again, I come back to the tenth of the, of the sentence, the sentence structure. <laughs> the practical difficulty is not the result of an action taken. And that's, those are very specific words. They're really hard to negotiate those. Action taken by the applicant or prior owner. The applicant nor the prior owner did anything that affected the problem he's dealing with today. And that's, that's how I view that. Although I don't discount what Ms. Shoup mentions, and I don't discount what you say, I just think on that specific item, it's black and white. Well, I may be overthinking it too, but I mean, I'm just looking at how it's written. No, I think you're right. I think, and that's, that's why we vote, that's why it's black people. So Mr. Chair, I think, you know, with regard to that, we can't, um, you know, we can't really guess his intentions when he brought the property originally. It was like he wanted to put this house right in this particular location. We can't determine that. The ordinance went in afterwards, so he's limited to where he could build the house. He can still build a house there, which I think what Mrs. Shoup is getting towards is that he still has the ability to build a home there. It's just going to be different than maybe what his original intention was, but we don't know what that original intention was. We just know what he wants to do right now. So that's just my thought for devil's advocate for that point. However, uh, standing by my original opinion that um, this is, uh, is not the result taken by him, but the previous owner. So, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I, 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 I need to keep it uh, civil and not that you're not being and, and amongst the board because this is obviously we all care and we really want to try and get it right. And this is obviously a passionate meeting and it should be. Um, but I want to make sure that uh, in the process we walk it through <coughs> the way it needs to be done. So on number three, any other comments on number three? All in favor of number three, the practical difficulty is not a result of an action taken by the applicant or prior owner. Four opposed? One. Okay, so it's four to one on that. Um, number four. Uh, no other feasible alternative is available to the applicant except a variance. Uh, that's a little bit more gray. Um, there are feasible alternatives. The question is, what does feasible mean? Uh, feasible means reasonable. In, in my definition, when you look it up, it's, it's what you could do a lot of things, but it makes sense, is it consistent? Um, I would argue again that, and, and you can tell where I'm coming from, if anybody's wondering, I don't want to play games here. I support this, so just on the table, I support I supported it. 40 minutes into the previous meeting. So uh, I, I don't want anybody to have any assumptions that I feel otherwise. I want that on the table. Um, so, you know, it's not my job to defend the applicant. Same thing, I, I am defending my position. Um, no other feasible alternative is available to, to the applicant except the variance. That is true. If he wants to do what he wants to do, he has to come to this board. Simple as that. If he wants to do what he wants to do, the only way he can do that is to come to this board. So I would say that's an accurate statement. My, my opinion on this one is that, yes, there's always a feasible, there's most of the time there's a feasible alternative moving the septic to the backyard. However, from my, again, my perspective that I stated earlier, moving the septic to the backyard will then trigger my opinion that it'll violate the neighborhood character because you'll have potential um, uh, change in elevation that would be, I guess, uh, undesirable for the existing character of the homes in that neighborhood. Again, that's only my opinion, but that's what I have. Well, there is a feasible alternative. It is to put it in the back. I have a house that is put in the back. I have a six, eight foot mound I look at every day. Did I have any options? No. I mean, that's all that was available on my lot. Would I have put it there if I didn't have to? No. <coughs> But it's there because I was required to do that, and that's what I had to do. So there is a feasible alternative in my mind. Right, and I just feel like there's a lack of evidence that's been submi submitted as to an alternative. I mean, they've done no none of their own septic work. They're just relying on a plan that was submitted a year before the ordinance was changed, which to me seems rather irrelevant. 
Um, and, you know, they put a lot of time, and he's explained, he's put a lot of time and effort and money into this to build it the way he wants, not to show us that the other way can't be done. I mean, we don't know that the septic can't go in the back, and we don't know that it's an economic injury for the septic to go into the back. I also have a house that the septic is elevated, and, I mean, it is what it is. You just, the town says you have to do it, and you do it. Um, and so I think I'm having difficulty with that. Well, let me give you an example of that in, in the lake region. We're not talking about the lake region. Well, it's important, it's important to tie it because there's a reason for the elevation. It's not because the town chooses to. It's because you don't have the right leaching. Right. So it's about leaching, and if you have no other place to put it, I mean, you could have obviously put that in the front of your yard, but that wouldn't look very good, would no, it? No, I couldn't. Why not? Septic system doesn't require septic. I don't think it's put out there anyway. I don't have enough. I don't have enough feet from it. Not to even build it. But you could have built your house further back. That was already built. To put the yeah. Oh, it was already there. And afterwards. Okay. okay. I'm going to move my but house. My, my point being, I just came from one today. I was working at a septic site. That's why it's interesting. They don't need to do a mile down on my the, the, my street. I just came from it. They're just putting it in. Um, there was literally no other feasible place because it had to be 100 feet back, and the road was next to it. So, the point being that you can, on, on the feasibility, that in most cases, there's a way to do something if you want to do it. You can do septic systems that are the size of a box. Uh, from GE makes them, they cost a ton of money, but you can do a lot of different things. The system that they were using was very high tech, uh, probably the same system that they're applying here. Measurement-wise, I'll look at it, and it's the exact same length. Um, so it's probably the same number of bedrooms, if I had to guess. Um, the, and, but they had to do, they have to do a mound, they have to go up four feet. Um, and it's the only place they can put it. There really is no other place they can put it. It's a true statement. The feasible alternative for these guys, yeah, could they put it in a different place? Does it make sense? Again, what's the definition of feasible? Feasible is reasonable. And again, reasonable, and I, I'll fall back on this was put upon them. And I think that is, whether it's, that is a critical issue. I own a lot next door to me. It's up for sale. I have assumptions when I bought it 23 years ago. If those assumptions changed, I would not be a very happy camper. Because I bought that lot expecting to be able to use that and sell it as part of my retirement. Now, you could all sit here and say, well, too bad, you lose, you should have done it before. But the truth is, no. The truth is, the feasible alternative is what I was zoned to do when I bought the property. This was pushed into them, and I think that is an important component there. And I come back to, that because this was pushed into them, they had no other feasible alternative but to come to us. And the, the kind of the proof of that is they went to the town with a plan that didn't fit. And that's why they're here. So kind of the proof is they, they said, okay, this is what we want to do. They come to the town. The town goes, no, you can't do that. The only feasible alternative is to go to the zoning board. They're here. So I fall back to that is the feasible alternative. Okay. I mean, I just want to comment, again, on the staff comments. You know, I'm, again, I've only been on the board a year and a half. I'm not sure how much credence we You're put. You're a smart woman. Before, before <laughs> how much credence we put behind them. But when the staff of the town is saying that, you know, there's no supporting documentation, that this is the only viable location of the parcel, I mean, I put a lot of credence in that. Sure. You know, they do this throughout the whole town, and, you know, and so, I mean, that says something. And that's my biggest problem, too, that I spoke of earlier, there's just no documentation. Okay. And if we're going to look at something from a feasibility standpoint, we need documentation to back that up. Right, and when we table it. Most of the ones that we do probably shouldn't be approved because there are feasible alternatives for practically everything. Well, I think two months ago when we tabled this, the septic was an issue. And they've come back and they're working off of a plan from 2012 and they've just within themselves turned it. But, I mean, we don't really have any <coughs> documentation as to that this is really the only option. Yeah. And that's not what we're pushing back to the town to have to come up with documentation on. And I, I don't know. I think that should be more of what we're doing here today, not proving or disproving something saying to the town, you guys figure it out. Now, when we asked, when we tabled this, we talked about what 
we were looking for. And we all thought at that point that the septic system was in place. I thought the septic system was going to be right about where the driveway and the house was, I believe. Yeah, a little over the, yeah, a little to the right, I think, yeah. Um, well, if we're, if we feel uncomfortable about the validity of the placement of the septic system, why don't we, as a board, call in the guy, the engineer that developed it, and ask him to explain it to us? We shouldn't ask them to do that. We're the ones that question it. Well, no, I think it's their choice. If they wanted to bring him there tonight, they could have. If they have to answer these questions with the representatives no, we're the that ones. they brought to We're them. the ones that can't answer the question. They, they've answered the question. They, they, they're they, the ones they, that they <coughs> It's their uh -huh. job to prove the point. In, in, in the, it's their job to prove the argument. That being said, it, it's, uh, it's their job to prove the argument. That being said, I understand where that frustration is coming from. Um, and um, again, I, I, this is a frustrating one for me because I, I just think it should be done. And I've said that. So I look at it and I, the feasible alternative, you know, it's a big lot. He bought it with a, with a with a he bought it with a a design a building envelope. His right to put it anywhere that building envelope is until the rule changed. So yeah, we could we could shove whatever we want at it. Trust me, there's a way that you know you could pump out a tank every week. But the point being, the feasible alternative was forced upon him because so we could and I, I certainly don't want to see this table again. Um, well, Mr. Chair, my, my biggest thing is we always want to, one of the biggest things that you as a chair and us as a board have done is we've always been very consistent right. with everything we've done. Mm -hmm. And not having the proper documentation is not being very consistent for us. We've had proper documentation before. I understand what you're saying. I guess my question would be, it would it change, w number one, I don't think we really need proper documentation. We've got a location that, it, that the septic system works in. Could it work in the back? Probably just fine. Would we approve it with an eight-foot mound, or whatever? You got to be six feet up, or whatever. I, again, I don't know what the surface ground is going to be, but you can have probably the same soil. I don't think it's relevant to the to the argument of the minutia of it. We're getting into minutia of you know should the house where it exactly sits is the issue. The issue is. I mean, the town the town approved it. The town approved placing it there. <coughs> A year before the ordinance change, right? Maybe I, maybe I'm I can help. Cool. Maybe I can help you. Out. I think I know where you want to get to, and, and, and I hate to do this. <laughs> I, I don't want to put words in your mouth, but maybe <laughs> I can help you. because it's like it's twenty to nine, and we're still on number four. So <laughs> let me help you. Out, okay. Okay. So so yeah, there's absolutely right. Documentation is a little bit lacking, but let's use a little common sense. If the system were to be put in the back. We already know from a previous applicant to the right side of his property, there's a lot of ledge there, okay? There's a lot of ledge on this lot. You put it in the back, it, you're going to have to probably end up running into ledge, so you're going to have more fill. You're going to obviously end up having a house that's way higher in the front in order to gravity feed to that, so they're probably going to end up pumping. So now you're, you're taking a septic system that might be, what, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen thousand dollars $16,000? I don't know. And you're, you're probably adding ten or twenty thousand dollars onto that to put it in the back. So so you can debate that maybe as a point of getting back to your point of reasonable. Is it reasonable to expect somebody to do that when there's an approved location in the front of the lot? Does that help you at all? Does that help put a little context to it? It's not our place to design their system, Ed. That's their job. But given that, let's use a little common sense and say, okay, what happens if you put it in the back? It's going to be a more difficult system to place. It's going to be a more expensive system. Am I right, Mr. Uh, Mr. Fisher? So, I mean, it is expensive. You're, you're getting there. You, you're, <coughs> I'm just trying to get you to where I think you want to go. I'm trying to get you some findings of fact that you can be Thank based. You. It, and I don't disagree with, with the folks who say that the document's lacking. I agree. I'm the one that wrote the note. <laughs> <laughs> but I just want you to get to a place where you can do some findings and conclusions. So, Thank you know, with that, maybe you can take a vote and move on to the next one before midnight. <laughs> okay? Thank you. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Any other comments on that issue? Um, I, uh, thank you. For, I don't know if I clarified it to you guys, and, and that's your call. I don't care what they do in Naples. I don't care what... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you can do anything you want. <laughs> 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 
Okay, so no other feasible alternatives available. We have to accept the variance. All in favor? Three. And opposed? Two. Okay. Uh, the grand variance will result in bringing the applicant's property more nearly into conformance with surrounding properties. Now, this is interesting. It does. 100%. It brings it closer to the road. So, I mean, it's pretty straightforward. It doesn't get us to where the ordinance says. Does it bring it more? Let me just read it exactly as it says. The grand advance will bring the applicant's property more nearly into conformance with surrounding property. Right, surrounding property, not the ordinance, surrounding I property. The answer to I that question. I don't think this is really a debatable one. I think we all probably would agree on this one. Take I'll a vote quick. <laughs> <laughs> all right, try. Anybody have any other questions? I don't want to do that. But, uh, any other questions on that one? Any thoughts? And it's important, do not, if you disagree, please make sure you state your opinion. Uh, I love the fact that we debate these things. Uh, so all in favor of number uh, five, I think. Uh, five. That's your name. I'll help you out, Brian. I got to do one in a minute. Number six, granting the variance will not have an unreasonably adverse effect on the natural environment. Um, I think that's pretty straightforward. Yeah, uh, pretty straightforward. Geez. They said there's trees behind it and stuff that they didn't want to take down, so I don't see any. All right, you're removing all the environmental growth that's back there, yeah. and you're not by putting it in the front. Anybody have any other comments? All in favor of that being met? That's your name. The property is not located in the zone, so we can eliminate seven. Let's go to number one of the, uh, as used in section BB2, uh, BB6, the following words have the meaning set forth below. Dimensional standards. Those provisions of this ordinance, which relate to lot area, lot coverage, frontage, setback, including the buffer requirements. I read that in the record strictly because that's exactly my point. This is about that. Uh, it's, we don't have to vote on that. A practical difficulty. The case where strict application of the dimensional standards of the ordinance to the property for which the variance is sought would both preclude a use of property which is permitted in the zone in which it is located and also would result in significant economic injury the applicant. And I have to apologize to you, sir, because I told you that wasn't relevant, and it is relevant. So I take that, uh, I, uh, th that's, uh, that is a, we've talked about, I, I, I think there is economic injury by making a property too close. I mean, if you've got kids, you don't, I wouldn't want my kids that close to that road. I, I guess for me, I look at economic injury as he bought the house. <coughs> As a, as a lot for a price of only a lot. So anything he builds, they're making, he's going to make money off of it, and there won't be an injury because it was purchased and at a price where there's no, there was no house on it. And he's building a house which will increase the value and he will get a return on it. And that's kind of my interpretation of it. Mm -hmm. And like one of the comments we had tonight is the best use for the lot would probably be to split up and sell it. <laughs> That is interesting, isn't it? So. Um, but let's, let's, let's entertain that. We probably as a board don't want that. Um, I, I would imagine. And again, that's inconsistent with what the neighborhood's like there. So you've got kind of a quandary there. You, you've got to, you know, there's a quandary. Um, I believe that the, the, again, reading this again, case where strict application of the dimensional standards of the ordinance to the property for which the variance of thought would both preclude the use of the property, which is permitted in the zone. When he bought it, it was different than it is today. He bought it under one set of assumptions. Those rules are gone. The new rules are in place. Those rules were thrust upon him. I think that's really important. And so consequently, there are impacts. There is a damage to that. If you thought you could do one thing with your property and you find out you can't, that changes your, your plan. I mean, I personally disagree. I mean, he bought it, bought it as a buildable lot. It's a buildable lot. Understood. Other comments from the board? Okay. All in favor of num uh, number two, I'd like to ha have that voted on. Number two, uh, any discussion on number two more than that? All in favor of number two is met. Three, opposed? And that's two. Okay. So thank you. So we've, we've gone through the requirements. Uh, other comments from the board members uh, from a global point of view or each individual point of view or anything that's been discussed? 
No, I would just encourage anybody that's purchasing property in the Higgins Beach area to follow what the county is doing and stay, stay up on things. That's right. It will make it much better. Anybody else? Any comments on anything? Okay. So do I have a motion? A move. As requested? As requested. Do I have a second? Second. Any discussion on that motion? Seeing none, all in favor? Three. All opposed? Two. Uh, that's how close it was. Uh, it's approved. Congratulations. And uh, hopefully you saw our system work fairly. Best of luck. And uh, thank you all for coming. Report to special exception appeal because by Southern Main Remodeling 108 Muzzy Road, uh, Muzzy, Muzzy Street, isn't it? Muzzy Street. Muzzy Road. Muzzy Road. Muzzy Road. LLC. Oh, yeah. Next line. 108 Muzzy <laughs> Road. <laughs> this is map R55 3A. <laughs> As we've already established, I'm having a hard time seeing. I feel very understaffed being all by myself. <laughs> <laughs> it may work to your advantage. It's <laughs> Jim to stay here. <laughs> yeah, Yanks out with us all the time anyway. <laughs> Uh, Thanks, Mr. Mr. Board, before we start, Mr. Chair, Mr. Sure. Before we start, the applicant and I are on a few committees with each other, so I just wanted to make that known. I don't think it will affect my opinion on the matter at all, but I want to make that known. Anybody have any uh, concern with uh, voting? No. Okay. I didn't make any I money off it. Okay. I'm not going to make any money off it. We both give. <laughs> so uh, the, uh, the board finds it's okay to have. I think it's saying that. Yep. You know, Maybe it should run for Congress. Um, <laughs> what she said. Sorry. Maybe she run for Congress. <laughs> Committee on. Um, so this is a hardship hearing. No. It's special a special exception. Well, oh, I'm looking at the one down the road. Thank you. Oh, my special goodness. exception. He's in Naples. <laughs> <laughs> Not entire. Public water, public sewer, too. So. <laughs> so a special exception, <laughs> just to read the special exception into the record. The hearing to slide applications for specific, the special exceptions permits as provided in section 4-1i uh, uh, of the uh, ordinance. Special exception permit may be granted only by majority of the vote of those members. And make sure you always say scouts are in fact. So. If you'd like to state your name, address, uh, and what you're trying to accomplish, we'll go from there. Good evening. Thank you for taking the time to talk to me tonight. Um, my name is Travis Blake. I own Southern Main Remodeling and 108 Muzzy Road, or 108 Muzzy LLC, um, which will be the owner of the property at 108 Muzzy. Uh, Southern Main Remodeling will be the tenant on the property. I own both companies 100%, so it's pretty much us. Uh, we are a full service remodeling company. We're going to be constructing on the property, which so that you guys know where it is. If you go Muzzy Road past Lowe's, it's been the abandoned boarded up ranch, which is the first building you see after you pass Lowe's. I have a great story about that later. It should, no, it's yeah. after the meeting. Wrong <laughs> house. Meeting. <laughs> <laughs> the wrong house. <laughs> had that conversation a lot. <laughs> um, so. Uh, we purchased the property in 2013 um, with the intentions of building a showroom slash office with a warehouse for our um, products and stuff that we install. With that, we have, being full service, we have company vans that are needed to pass, needed to park at the property when they're not in use. In the B2, it says no outdoor storage, which means if it sits there for more than 24 hours, it's considered outdoor storage, uh, if I'm understanding that correctly, just along with that. 
So on the weekends we don't work. My vans would be sitting there for more than 24 hours. So in this case, what I'm asking for is the ab ability to park the vans behind the property, behind the building. So from Muzzy Road, you would not see them. They would be parked behind the new constructed building um, when we're in our off hours, which is 4 o'clock in the afternoon till 8 in the morning. I'm surrounded on two sides by conservation land. Those neighbors have no issues with it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and then on my uh, heading towards South Portland, there's one piece of undeveloped property that <coughs> um, is nothing. It's just land. Across the street from me, which is a different zone, are Abco storage trailers parked in my, as I will stand outside my front door of my shop and look across the street, I look at 40-foot containers all day long. So I just <laughs> want to park my van. <laughs> um, so I, that's, I guess, my case here. Okay. Very good. We'll go through the requirements of the, uh, the permit. And I'll just read them off to you and you can just answer it on yep. the record, okay? The proposed use will not create unsanitary or unhelpful conditions by reason of its sewage disposal, emissions to the air or water, or other aspects of its design or operation. And you can just also indicate the, uh, the quality, what you have for trucks is not leaking oil. Because they are both sides are right. or okay. are leaking oil. How are you going to solve that? Because they are, you're on a conservation. conservation. Yep. Correct. Um, yeah, this, the exception will allow me to park the, you just read <coughs> A, correct? Sorry. Uh, yes. Yeah, I just yeah. want to read the answer to the question. This exception is to allow our company vehicles to be parked around the rear proposed building on off hours. Our employees do not take vehicles home. This does not create any unhealthy conditions. All of our vehicles are fairly new. Um, there, we park in customers' driveways. I do not have any vehicles that are leaking, um, and if they did, they would be very quickly fixed because I don't want to be ruining my customers' driveways either. So. None of them are leaking. They're pretty much all late model. If you see our vehicles on the road, they're decent shape express vans, um, box trucks. Well, when I say box trucks, they're con contractor size box trucks. Um, How many units are you looking for? Uh, f uh, the, usually there's five. five. Is that the maximum you're looking for, or is there, is there a number you're looking for for spaces? Um, I'm asking <laughs> for the five based on what we have in our, what I feel our growth is going to be. The five should take care of that. The proposed use will not create unsafe vehicular or pedestrian traffic conditions when added to the existing and foreseeable traffic in its vicinity. Um, this will not create an issue with vehicle or pedestrian traffic because the exception will not change the amount of vehicle traffic because the site is where each employee would start each day regardless. Um, and the exception is to allow for us to park the vehicles around back of property so it doesn't create problems with traffic conditions. It's in a park condition that we're asking for. And your employees are going to park where? They will, they're basically they'll pull their van out and their car will go in that spot during the day all around the back of the building. And the proposed use will not create a public safety problems which would be substantially different from those created by the existing uses in the neighborhood or require substantially greater degree of municipal fire or police protection than the existing uses in the neighborhood. Uh, don't feel it'll create a problem for public safety. Our vehicles we park in proposed parking spots on site plan it will not change fire or police protection for existing neighborhoods. Okay. And uh, the proposed use will not result in sedimentation or erosion or have an adverse effect on the water supplies? <laughs> no. Uh, proposed use will be compatible with existing uses in the neighborhood with respect to physical size, visual impact, intensity of use, proximity to other structures, and density of development. <coughs> Again, I, <laughs> it's pretty, pretty straightforward. Pretty straightforward to me. Um, you know, we. We're not, there's conservation land on two sides and the third one's an undeveloped site, so. And you're not in the shoreland zone there? No. And uh, you have, uh, did you purchase the property or under contract with the property or what's the uh, for that? So currently it's owned by Southern Main Property, which is in my parents' name. Um, That's enough. We need some, the, the question really is, do you have sufficient right of title and parents, I would argue, meet that requirement. I do, and we'll also have a closing on June 29th where it becomes mine. Okay. All set up, so. 
Uh, the applicant is technical. This is I love this one. The applicant has technical and financial ability to meet the standards of the section and comply with any of the conditions imposed by the Board of Appeals pursuant to subsection five of the subsection. What that means is that you're willing to fix all of our houses for free. <laughs> uh, I don't know what it means. Oh my goodness. Some of these were interesting to try to answer. I, I've, I've explained this to you several times. <laughs> I'm, my, one of my bosses used to say, I'm, gonna, I'm only going to tell you this once, so listen and listen good. <laughs> <laughs> so what it means is if the board sort of finds your request appropriate, but feel that there may be some things like a fence, a screening, um, some possible uh, additions to make it more appropriate, do you have the technical financial capability to do that? That's all that means. And, I hope so. I have a big building going in front of it to yes, block so. <laughs> Always remember and never forget. Never forget. <laughs> um, so I would say yes. Okay. Careful. Uh, <laughs> yeah, depending, on what, depending on what you choose. Um, the need. proposed use will be compatible with the existing uses of the name with respect to the generation of noise and hours of operation. You said date to five. Yeah, so I mean, this. The outdoor storage is going to sit there very quietly in the evening, so <laughs> no, one's, no one's there. So it, it really won't have any effect. Okay, great. Um, the applicant may also need to adjust the proposed use will comply with any applicable standards. Section 9. Uh, anything to add to that? No, no, I think you've done a great job on that one. Thank you very much. Uh, anything in the... It's almost easier following a tougher one, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Special exceptions are generally easier. <laughs> yeah. Is there anything in this we have to look at as far as... No. Uh, those standards that are on the application are the only ones that you need to look at in this case. It's not the home occupation where you have the other side. Thank you. Yep. Okay. Your phone call, somebody? It no. was not. Okay. Open the public uh, hearing. Do you have a speaker in public? There's nobody here? No. Uh, no phone call I did there. have an email, and I, I know it's coming from me in hearsay, but Max McBride, who does own the undeveloped piece of land to the South Portland side of me, emailed me and said, hey, I just got this letter. What's this all about? I explained to him what it was. He goes, I got no issues. Have fun. So, again, I, I could forward you an email if you'd like it. But We, we didn't hear from him. So. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, I'll just run through these quickly if the board's comfortable with that. Uh, we can <coughs> state your position as we go through, okay? The proposed use will not create unsanitary and unhelpful conditions by the reason of sewage disposal emissions to air, water, or other aspects of its design. It's not going to be allowed to be built if it can't. Does anybody have anything else to add to that? All in favor of A being met? Excuse me. Travis, have you gone to planning board with this yet, or is that still that's to come? Next. That's next. We're on okay. the next pocket, mm -hmm. I think. I just wanted to make that known so that they, they will be reviewing a lot of the storm water and other stuff, just so the board's aware. Thank you. Uh, the proposed use will not create unsafe vehicular or pedestrian traffic conditions when added to the existing and foreseeable traffic in the vicinity. It's a pretty straightforward. Pretty straightforward road. It's mostly commercial there anyway. Uh, any else? All in favor? That is met. Proposed use will uh, not create public safety problems which would be substantially different from those created by existing use of the neighborhood or require a substantially greater degree of municipal fire or police protection than existing uses in the neighborhood. It's going to be a new building. It's going to meet all the current standards. I don't see anything with that. And the parking in the back, um, again, the planning board is going to require if, if there's any setbacks that need to be from water or whatever. Uh, they certainly are going to want the parking in the back, too. So good job with that. Uh, they kind of met the standards of that, what they were asking for. All in favor? That's met. Uh, the proposal will not result in sedimentation or erosion or have an adverse effect on the water supplies. Again, same thing. Um, anybody have any questions or comments on that? All in favor? The uh, proposed use will be compatible with existing uses of the neighborhood with respect to physical size, visual impact, intensity of use, proximity to other structures, and density of development. Uh, no, it really doesn't because there's some really nice tractors across the way. Uh, I, those boxes look really good, so I'd say it's not consistent. <laughs> yeah, I mean, he's looking at something that's essentially worse than what he's going to be doing, so, <laughs> so it's got pretty good finding back there that it's consistent. I've got no problem with that. Need some data. Oh, I'm there. That's unanimous. Uh, you're on the shoreline zone. Uh, you have the ability to pay the bill. Hopefully. I'm in favor of that being met. I guess we look for a checkbook or something. <laughs> uh, 
The applicant has technical financial ability, as you said that. The uh, proposed use will be compatible with existing uses in the neighborhood with respect to the generation of noise and hours of operation. It's commercial zone, pretty standard. All in favor? Aye. Thanks for your answers. Um, anything else we want to cover on that? Anybody have any other comments to me? It's the right way of handling it. There have been properties in Scarborough, especially on Route 1, that have asked for rights to be able to park vehicles on the property and have been declined. And so it's important that we don't look at this as flippant, although this case is different because these vehicles are behind the structure and in an area that's very well suited for that. It's an industrial zone very specifically as opposed to Route 1. Uh, and I only bring that up because I, I do know of that specific case where they were pretty client. So as, as, although we're, we're able to enjoy ourselves as we talk through these things, we also study these and we take them seriously. And this isn't just uh, a pass through. It makes sense. It fits the zone. It meets the requirements. It's just an easy one relative to the others. Yeah, especially so. when some pass the test with a carport plastic carport that they can put them things, put the cars in so they're not classified as outdoor storage. <coughs> I had one that actually had that. Any further discussion on this final vote? Do I have a motion? Move to approve appeal number 2604. Second. Any discussion on the motion? Seeing none, all in favor? That's unanimous, thanks. Thank you. Well, uh, well, uh, I need a new deck. <laughs> I need to pay for this building. So that's <laughs> well played. Well played. I just want to. I just want to say I think what Travis is going to do to that property is really going to, I think, be impressive mm -hmm. based on what's there now. I think I, <laughs> did I include the elevation? Um. The yes. I can show you that. <coughs> Anything. That whole area needs it. Uh, that, that, that has been. Doing all the work yourself? What's that? Doing all the work yourself? Yeah. That's why I was when I had to get two bids on the contractors for the FDA. <laughs> <laughs> they needed two contractors to get the site. So that's, that's going to be a much improved much, much building. Much nicer. Um, they're now sitting back from the road from where the existing cost building is on the property. <coughs> that that? So and there's still a great story at that range. off the record conversation is fun. Um, I have one request of the the, um, the board and of uh, the CEO. Our property that we were very generous with down at the corner this last year, um, we we're allowing them outdoor storage for the season. Oh, up, up at eight corners? Yes. Can we as a board request you to deal with that issue because I believe that has not been dealt with and I'd like to take a vote of the board that requests the town take an action on that property. Is that appropriate, inappropriate, acceptable let's, or not? Let's discuss that offline because I, it's not appropriate to do it here. Okay. Um, but I can fill the board in offline. Right, very good. Thanks. Okay. Um, any other comments from board members? Real quick, I just wanted to say, with, in regards to the first appeal, um, I was a realtor for a couple of years, and what really struck me with that first appeal was, I mean, we're required to have insurance. You have a lot of due diligence. When a buyer comes to you and says, I want to build on this lot, they should have been before the town. And so I have, I have real conflicting issues with the we didn't know, or I understand it wasn't passed at the time, but when stuff is being developed behind you and things are changing, there's a responsibility on the realtor to help their client. And, you know, he didn't come right after to do it. He sat on it for years. And so, you know, I, re that I think I want the board to appreciate the responsibility behind realtors and that I do feel, you know, there was, I think, Lee said inaction and things like that. And um, there's some responsibility there. You I mean, have the, you I, have the I, ground very well. I thought you did a very good job with your explanation. Well, I mean, the position. training that I received at 24, which was 10, 11 years ago, was you you have to go before the town. Um, Keller Williams has attorneys on hand now for every single closing. So a guy like that 
the attorney would have sent them to the town. And so I just want the board to know that there's a lot of due diligence that goes behind purchasing property. So even though the, the ordinance wasn't passed, they should have come to, at least come to the town and said, I want to build on this lot. And so, okay. Thank you for sharing that. Yeah. And I appreciate your comments because it takes a lot of guts to get out there and stuff <coughs> issues like that. Those, those are some of the same issues I had with it as well. Pardon? Those are some of the same issues I had with it as well. I, I don't really care that much about you. <laughs> I don't no. care that much about you either. I mean, the same thing with you. Okay. It Most takes your journey. Yeah, I don't know. Most of your journey. Thank you. Have, have a great night. We will. <laughs> you didn't even ask me if I had any comments. <laughs> Okay, said motion to adjourn. Can't do anything about it.